It's the Binge Bum Podcast, whoa, it's time to talk about our favorite shows, from all the streaming networks all across the globe, from Netflix to Hulu to Disney Plus and HBO, get ready for fun and lots of show reviews, it's Binge Bum, Binge Bum coming to you. Hey, everybody. It's Friday, February 12th. It's episode six already of the Binge Bum Podcast. I can't believe it's February 12th already. I know. It's going fast, but I can't wait because it's just rainy and cold. But I think most of the country is rainy and cold right now, even the southern parts. It's true. It's also the Chinese New Year today. Oh. The Year of the Ox. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that'll bring us some good fortune. I hope so. Yeah. You ready to get through some news? Let's do it. Hey, Apple TV is adding to their slate of uh, kids programming with a new series, Jane, based on Jane Goodall, who I hope everyone knows, uh, who is known as a conservationist. Uh, with her work with the protection of chimpanzees. It's a new kid series. Uh, it's going to follow Jane Garcia. She's a 10-year-old girl. Each episode is going to follow Jane and her teammates and as they work to protect an endangered animal each episode. Is this a live action show or don't an know. Anima- I was actually oh. <laughs> yeah, I was actually looking at this and was like, I don't know if it's live action or animated. Kind of sounds like Dora the Explorer to me. That's, that's what, what I'm picturing in my head. That's what came to mind when I first read this. Yeah. Um, but they are pulling really strong on the kids' programming. So so I looked up. Jane Goodall is still alive. She and is. And she's still working. I meant um, to put her age here. She, I can't remember. She's, I believe, in her 80s. I think so, too. But she's been around for a long time, and she's done some great work. She's written, like, dozens of books, lots of books. and lots and lots of movies and documentaries and specials and She's pretty amazing. She's done a lot of good for yeah, the world. Yeah, she has that uh, institute uh, that is in some country in Africa that yeah. teaches and preserves chimpanzees all over the continent, I assume. I think it's pretty wide spreading. Yeah. And gorillas, too. I mean, she's done yeah. things besides just chimpanzees. Well, I think this is amazing, and I look forward to finding out more about what it is all about. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, it was just ordered, so I suspect we won't see this this year. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so maybe early next year we'll we'll see this. Cool. I'm really, really fingers crossed, hoping that Apple announces that they're going to buy some studio, and that all of a sudden we're just going to have this big library of things to watch yeah. that we don't have now because it's oh, it's coming. It's pretty small compared to all the other networks that are out there. It's coming, but yeah, but it's quality stuff. So. I know that's true. It's all it's all truly original stuff. Uh, but I think they could use a back catalog. Yeah. Of, of some stuff. They just got to find the right one, one that's for sale. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this uh, earlier in one of like season or episode four, I believe. Uh, but Search Party, HBO Max has renewed it for a season five. It was announced just this past Tuesday. It's going to be renewed for its fifth season. As you know, seasons one through three followed uh, best friends Dory, Drew, Elliot, and Portia through private investigations. Um, an accidental murder, a cover-up, and then a trial. And, you know, everyone, she, they were looking for their friend Chantal. This past season uh, that just came out, season four, Dory was held prisoner, forcing uh, Drew Elliott, the remaining friends, Drew Elliott, Portia, to form another search party. So I assume uh, we're going to find out what's happening to Dory. It's funny, you know, this is kind of a, a very specific thing that's happening yes. to these people, and it keeps happening to them over and over again, <laughs> that they need to put search parties together right. to find their friends. Um, these are very unlucky people. But the show, the show is friggin' hilarious. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, it's off just, the wall. Off the, it's the way they talk. Uh, whoever the, are the writers of this show, they're, they're really smart. It reminds me almost like with the writing of Big Bang and whoever wrote for Sheldon. Mm-hmm. I kind of get, it's that kind of smartness. Yeah. Um, but not in a way of like science smart. It's just right, right. culturally smart in what's yeah. going on in the world today. It's cool. Exactly. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, I'll look forward to that. I know. Yellowstone fans, you are not. You, well, you ugh. couldn't get past the first like three episodes, I think. We I love had, Kevin. We had started watching. I, listen, I love Kevin Costner, and I, I got into this series for, yeah. we watched a couple episodes, and then I just found it way, way too violent for my liking. And, I, and I'm not I against violent. I was digging it. Not against violent stuff, but yeah. that doesn't mean you can't continue to watch it. I just it just turned me off. It was too much for me. Yeah. So 
All right. Well, the prequel is set for Paramount Plus. We all know that Paramount Plus is coming March 4th. Right. It is dubbed Y 1983. And it's going to follow the earlier Dutton family. It, it's not 1983, it's 1883. <laughs> it is going to follow uh, the Dutton family, you know, their generations generation earlier. Yes. earlier than that. Uh, as a journey west of the Great Plains to Montana, which is where uh, Yellowstone takes place now. All right. Yellowstone is a huge hit. Um, it does fall under the Paramount umbrella. Weirdly enough, Yellowstone is streaming on Peacock. I don't know. I suspect. It must be a deal they made before it they was announced be- their own streaming service. Because Yellowstone came out prior to even a CBS All Access, so it had no streaming home. Right, and uh, it was so on the Paramount Network, the it's broadcast a, cable network. Correct. Right. Yeah, but it landed on uh, Peacock for its streaming home. So I suspect it's going to remain there until whatever yeah. agreement until they their signed, deal is up, right. they deal it up, and, and, and it's going to be moved over to Paramount+. Plus. There you go. All right, we'll look forward to that. So yeah. is this in production yet, or is it just the early stages? Early, early, early. Uh, it. No, uh, no it, it's already set. It's set for later this year. It's got... They haven't set a date. I believe it's like November okay. is when it's rumored to right. uh, to come out. All right, Dill, I'm not sure how I feel about this because yeah. I am so on the fence on this issue. But it's been announced by HBO Max, which, Lord, HBO Max is doing everything. I'm telling you. Yeah, they've got a new Woody Allen docuseries coming out. This is going to be a look at all the past allegations of sexual abuse against Woody Allen by his daughter, Dylan Farrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, This is going to be a four-part series exploring the private story behind the allegations uh, by when Dylan was seven years old. She's now 35. Mm -hmm. He originally adopted her along with his girlfriend at the time, actress Mia Farrow. So, listen, I've, I've... I feel like it's been done. Well, it has been done. and uh, But this one is going to actually include interviews with Mia Farrow, with Dylan, with uh, other people in the family, like Ronan Farrow, who's a journalist now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's pretty much the one who started the Me Too movement with he, his reporting. He brought down Harvey Weinstein. He sure did. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that was a good thing that he did. Yes. Uh, but he does not, he's not a fan of his father's. He does not have a relationship with him. No, I can't imagine. And he, were, <laughs> he <laughs> believes his sister, he believes this really happened. Also, family friend Carly Simon makes an appearance in this. She is uh, on on the side of uh, Mia Farrow and friends and family. And then there's also uh, Frank Marco, M- Marco, Marco, who was the original prosecutor. Um, Woody Allen was looked into twice. Yeah. Uh, and cleared both times. He's never been charged with anything. And he, you know, you're supposed to be presumed innocent until <laughs> proven guilty, right? right. He was pr- it, pr- proved innocent twice by court of law. So, yeah. But, you know, this is something that he, he will never get away from. He's always going to be Woody Allen, that guy, these S- allegations. Suspected not, child abuser. Not yeah. for what he's known for. I mean, he's still working. I think he has he a little... A movie a year. Yeah, he's still got a project year. going on. Yeah. So, I don't know. I It's not for me to have an opinion on this about what are they... Yeah. What are what are their next steps? I, what are they listen, I've read hoping it, to I, get from this? I don't know what they want from this because the man is like old as the hills. He's yeah. not going to be around much longer. I don't know what they think. The statute of limitations are obviously up. Yeah. They probably just want to kill his career in the public media. And that's already happened to an extent. I mean, I will, I will give it to him. He's a weird guy. I mean, didn't he marry one of the I mean, he married, daughters that he, married he adopted? Sunni Farrow, which yeah. he, no, he did not adopt. Mia Farrow adopted um, this Asian child. Uh, he had nothing to do with it. He was never married to Mia Farrow, so he was never a father or a right. stepfather to her. Uh, but they did start a relationship, and they've had a very long, it's very many long. decades long relationship yeah. with children, and they're very happy, and she supports him, yeah. and she doesn't believe any of this uh, to be true. And, of course, she doesn't have a yeah. relationship with her mother. It's all a big, big <laughs> fat mess. It's a mess. And uh, I didn't write this down, but I will say, obviously, Woody Allen and Soon Yi, not in this docuseries. They, oh, well, obviously. They declined yeah, no, of course. to be a part of it. Yeah, so. he's done He's done even commenting about it. He just doesn't yeah. even get involved in this morning. So. so when is this coming out? I don't see that here. Don't have a date. Okay. Yeah. I, I suspect it's around the corner. Yeah. Um, I looked at the HBO 
Max uh, app, and there is a a little preview, or they didn't call it a trailer, but it's there, kind of like a holding place. Okay, but it's not active yet. Not active yet, so we'll keep an eye out. Cool. On that. And lastly, and you're going to enjoy this. This is fun, and I wish I had found this last week. Uh, this is like a week old, but it's still relevant. Netflix joins with Stage 32. And just to give you a backstory, uh, Stage 32 is basically like a LinkedIn, but for the film and TV industry. Okay. And Netflix did this in an effort to reach more writers and find more content for, for Netflix. Basically what this is, it's a 90-minute free webinar, and it will teach you what kinds of stories that Netflix is looking for and how to write a pitch document. Oh, I need to watch this. I There's a syllabus, and I have this link. There's a syllabus. It is long. It looks very detailed. It goes from the basics of developing a story and how to write a pitch all the way to the setting, the characters, and something has to happen to one of the characters. It, there's in, in this there's is, a formula. There's a formula of what Netflix is looking for. Right. The live webinar that had a Q and a uh, was February 4th, but it's still available now on demand and it's completely free. You have to like sign up for a stage 32 login okay. and then you'll be able to access it. Nice. The webinar is hosted by Christopher Mack and he is the uh, director of creative talent for Netflix. Oh, well, it's, they're getting it from the guy who's knows what Netflix is looking for and hires the writers. He's the one. Looking He's the for one. It. Right. Um, so it's stage 32.com slash education. Now I will tell you when you go there, there are hundreds of webinars. As of today, there is a big banner that says the Netflix with Stage 32. Okay. That's the link you want. If not, if it's gone, by the time you hear this, you can search for it. You have to go through the multiple pages of uh, webinars. God. Well, I'm sure there's lots of people out there who are you going to do it. Uh, m- maybe. It's I, free. I, it's a 90 minute webinar. I have some great ideas yeah. for them. Yeah, I have some serious ideas. Even if it wasn't for Netflix, it could be cool to know. If you have something that Netflix isn't looking for, maybe somebody else is doing it, and then you have a leg up. I like it. I will check it out. New show announcements. We uh, For All Mankind, Season 2. We talked about this a couple of uh, episodes ago, but we have a date, February 19th, right around the corner. It's like two weeks away. This is going to be pretty cool. If you are fans of the first season, you are going to notice a lot of differences in the second season. So Apple released on Wednesday, a kind of like a behind the scenes featurette. Very cool. It's going to be on the show notes so you can go watch it. Uh, They're leaving the 70s and going jumping right into 1983. What's cool about this is because the Russians have... You know, they've they've made it and we're there, too, that this whole space race thing is that it's pushed us as a world to push electronics and technology, technology further, further. And faster. So they have electric cars mm-hmm. in this season and cell phones. This is basically a reimagination of the space race with the Russians beating us to the moon. Yes, they yes, beat us. That's what happened in the yeah. first season. And now we need to deal with the fact that we've got a permanent base on the moon. Yes. And so do the Russians. So we're all up there at the same time. And it's almost uh, it's almost very kind of Star Wars in a way that it's going to have like this world war that's going to be played out on the moon, basically. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a big like a military presence of a base. It's called uh, Jamestown. Nice. Yeah. Jamestown being the first settlement in the United States. Exactly. Well, look at that. Look at that. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's a great show. It's very well done. They must have a huge budget for this show. God, I'd hope so. So the second season of All Mankind is coming to Apple TV Plus on February 19th. There you go. I like it. Also, uh, Coming to America released, uh, they had their new trailer that they put out, uh, I think December, late December of last year. But they have a brand new Super Bowl ad that they put out uh, just last Sunday. Shows some new scenes and new characters from the movie. And uh, you guys can check that out on YouTube if you want to see more of Coming to America. That's Coming to to The number two. Yeah. The sequel. I I know you're excited about that. I'm not. I I didn't get a kick out of the first one. I just thought it was just hokey. I also, I don't like Eddie Murphy. It's one of the best movies of all time. In anything, I don't like him. (laughs) Please. Oh, you're just wrong on that one. Arsenio Hall should do more, but not Eddie Murphy. All right. Plus, I believe Eddie Murphy in this one is. Uh, like place multiple 
characters. Well, he did in the first one too. Yeah. See, you don't know. You don't know. You I shouldn't. Don't know. You shouldn't be talking about. I hated this. it. All right, talk about the next one. All right, Punky Brewster is back. It's a new series on Peacock. Uh, February twenty fifth is when that debuts. The cool thing about this is I'm not sure how to say her first name. Is it Soleil? Soleil Moonfry. Yeah. So it's. I think that means sun. Doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yeah, Soleil Moonfry. Sun uh, Moon is. Uh, reprising her role as Punky Brewster. In this uh, new series, Punky is now a single mother of three and trying to get her life back on track when she meets Izzy, a young girl in the foster system who reminds Punky a lot of her younger self. Ah. And she's like wearing the red shoes and all that stuff. She wears different shoes, one on each one foot. One on each foot. This uh, looks really cute to me. Punky Brewster, Slay Moon Fry looks great. She's obviously now much older. She's in her 40s. And uh, she's coming back. And she, I don't know what she's been doing all this time. I, I don't know. think she's been acting. but uh, I don't think so. I looked at her IMDb just, yeah. IMDb just to make sure I spelt this name correct. And okay. I should have looked more. Because I saw Punky Brewster is her most recent one. Cool. Well, <laughs> was, yes. was that, or were you just giving me the eye of saying, why did I bring it up? Because Why nothing. did you bring it up if you didn't actually look and see what I, she was doing? I'm yeah. just trying to fill airtime. No, that's not what we do here. <laughs> anyway, this looks like a, it looks like a Disney Channel show to me. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's for the family. It's, yeah. it's, it's nothing uh, groundbreaking here, but it is, uh, you know, it's built on a family sitcom from the 80s. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. Also, what I like about this is that Freddie Prince Jr. is in it. He plays Punky Brewster's ex-husband. Uh, of course, that's um, Sarah Michelle Gellar's real life husband. What's he done since He's uh, done I don't since stuff. I know what you did last summer? Oh my goodness, he's done lots and lots <laughs> of stuff. He's <laughs> been he? on he's been on several series. He was in that series with Brian Austin Green, and uh, he's done t- tons of stuff. But anyway, cool. he'll always just be Buffy's husband to me. Right. But there you go. <laughs> All right, last on our list is this great new movie called Moxie. This is coming from Amy Poehler. She directed it and has a part in it. She plays the mother. Mm -hmm. This is coming to Netflix on March 3rd. I'm very excited about this. You guys can get the link to the trailer on our website. Uh, It's also up on YouTube if you want to go straight there. It's pretty cool. It reminds me a lot of Mean Girls. Yes. So the girls, the 16-year-old girls in uh, fictional high school are kind of sick up with the sexist and toxic environment in their school so they basically based on amy poehler's character's mother the mother character's rebellious past the kids decide to really take matters into their own hands and they create this um fictional i don't know it's called moxie it's uh, kind of their way of dealing with these uh bad eggs right. at their high school it's yeah. uh it's uh, a it's publication getting, it's getting back at the popular kids right exactly right. and it's the ones making who things even making making it mean right let's get get those bullies <laughs> right right that's exactly. what it's all about yeah it's coming, i like it i'm gonna watch it they they i like this instead of a coming of age tale they call it a coming of rage yeah revolution it's cool i like that a lot it looks really cute it's out on march 3rd <laughs> And finally, before we go, we have our weekend watch list. And like I said earlier in the show, if you live in the United States, it's going to be cold, wet, right. if not snowy, yeah. all weekend into next week. So you need a lot to do. We got a lot on this list. Except for our friends in Florida. That's they're, they're doing fine down there. Oh, those people. <laughs> uh, first on our list, uh, we talked about this last episode, Map of Tiny Little Things. New film, Amazon Prime, came out today. If you don't remember, remember it kind of reminded us of uh, that Hulu uh, show, um, Palm Springs. Yes. Kind of, uh, it's two teens kind of reliving the same day. Over and over, over and over. And over and over and over and want to see what happens. It's so. very cute. It's a, it's a love story, kind of like Palm Springs, kind of a cross between Palm Springs and um, Groundhog Day. And yeah. Those kind of movies. What was the 51st dates? That kind of thing. Oh, I forgot about 50. But this looks really, really cute. We've talked about it before, but we wanted to talk about it today because it comes out today and you guys can watch it this weekend. It does. Uh, Number two, this was out yesterday. Now, I did put this on here. This is a reality series. You know, I don't particularly like reality series, but this this one I'm digging. This is different. I'm digging this one. Uh, It's a new series by HBO Max. Came out yesterday. It's called The Bridge. And this is essentially is 12 strangers from all over the UK. And they have one common goal is to get a treasure worth a hundred thousand. Is that pounds? Pounds. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's in an Island. And the only way to get there is to work together and they have to build a bridge before they have 21 days, 21 days, 21 days to build this bridge as a group. Mm-hmm. And then one of them 
based on we don't know what parameters yet, and right. they don't either, right. is going to win the entire 100 thousand pounds this is a british show obviously because everything is in um it's a 300 meter bridge that right they have to exactly build. it's a hundred thousand pounds <laughs> and they all have british accents but this is really unique and you should see watch the trailer guys because it looks really fun I it mean, does they basically use they have just a couple tools they have to use trees and wood that they find in this really remote area that they're living in right. for three weeks and get that bridge built. That's the only way they're going to get this. Money. I put this on the list because it looks really well made. It's, yeah, it's it's it survivorish. Almost, it almost looks like a movie, but it's it's very it's different. It's completely different yeah. than what you see on TV. And it's narrated by James McAvoy, which is kind That's of fun. Right. Who's a very popular actor yeah. these days. So I will check it out. It's out now. We can watch it as soon as we're done taping this show. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. Number three, Amy Schumer learns to cook. This is something that's been on my list, and I had just not pulled the stri- uh, the trigger on it. Yeah. Um, it's streaming now on Discovery Plus. This is season two. It's, no, this is the first one. Mm-hmm. This is and this is the uncensored one that they oh, the uncensored yeah, one. which makes it a little bit more fun okay uh, to watch now that it's on a streaming platform. Got it. Uh, you're it's basically Amy Schumer. Her husband likes to cook, can cook. He's a chef. He's a chef. And it's Amy Schumer learns to cook, but she doesn't really. She just makes great cocktails and is in the jokes. way. She makes jokes. And she's just in the way. And it's right. it's a it's a fun watch and uh, something that's on our list. So they're quarantined in Martha's Vineyard of yes. all places. They must have had a summer house there. And they decided that was a good place to go to with their baby. Mm-hmm. And so they filmed this entire thing all by themselves. It's just the two of them there. It's with like two iPhones or yeah, something. Yeah, so they set up a bunch of cameras in their house and they make meals and then they sit down and eat them. Yeah, it, it looks really funny. And Mamie's getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of people are probably getting fat this well, year. Yeah. yeah Everyone's year. gaining the COVID-1919. The COVID-1919. That's funny. Yeah. Have, did you hear that somewhere else or did you make that up? No, I heard that somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> what? That's funny. <laughs> okay, so this is not season two, but this is a, a re- Where did this originally air? Because it aired on broadcast? It did. Yeah. And now, so now they can put out the uncensored version, right? Well, this because was on. She uh, is dirty. She's a dirty comedian, not, so I assume this not is going to DIY uh, HGTV. You know, one of those, one of those. Discovery food ne- networks. Maybe it was Food, food Network. Network. Yeah, okay. that where they couldn't. So this is the uncensored one, right? I guess they have all the original footage and they're they're airing it now. I like it. It should be a lot more fun. Obviously, we've been talking about this ever since it came on. Uh, Your Honor, the finale. Yes, is this Sunday. I am looking forward to it. We we, we have really been enjoying it, and we're all yeah. we're all caught up. Yeah. No, no, we have we, two more. We purposely did not watch. <gasps> oh, that's right, the last one because we wanted to make so, it like a movie exactly. this Sunday. This so this Sunday night we're going to make it like a movie. We're going to watch yeah. the last two back to back. Oh, I can't wait! It makes me very anxious sometimes. Yeah, when we watch them. All right, well, it's it gonna- makes you want to slap the hell out of adam i want to slap everybody <laughs> i want to slap amy schumer for getting fat and i want to slap all these people yes i can't do that no oh my goodness all, all right. right all right guys that is our show for this week thanks for listening uh join us make sure you join us on facebook and twitter and if you like our show only if you like it please rate us wherever you listen to this podcast only if you like exactly. it exactly and uh right. we'll see you next week happy binging y'all Thanks for listening to this episode of the Binge Bum Podcast. For more about what you just heard, locate the show notes at bingebum.com.